here we have a GraphQL query that is repeatedly calling the fields for amount, currency, and formatted. We can use GraphQL fragments to enclose these fields within its own fragment. We can then spread that fragment onto the query so we don't have to repeat ourselves. So to define a fragment, we use the keyword fragment, followed by the name and the type on which the fragment belongs to and the fields we want to enclose within that fragment. So here, name and the name of the type and the fields. Then we take that fragment name and wherever we're using those fields, we can simply remove them and we can spread in those fields anywhere we are repeating ourselves. We can also go a step further and include fragments inside of fragments. So here we have a currency to fetch the code and symbol. We'll now move this into its own fragment that we'll spread into the money fields fragment. So let's define the currency fields fragment name on the type currency and we'll pass those two fields. Then if we run that query, you'll see everything comes back as expected. We can also create a fragment for our query cart. So here let's create a fragment for our cart info and we'll spread that on the type cart. Then all that's left to do is spread in the cart info fragment name within the cart query. If we go ahead and use GraphQL aliases to make another request to a new cart, in this case the ID will be test, we can also spread in that fragment. So the response here will contain the cart and the basket, which is just the cart but aliased. We can also use GraphQL variables within fragments. So to quickly check this out, let's move the query into the fragment for cart info. And here we'll use the actual query cart and we'll pass the ID. Then all that's left to do is spread cart info onto the query and you'll see here that that variable is passed down to the fragment. GraphQL fragments also work with mutations. So if we change the query to a mutation and pass in the cart ID, if we call the add item mutation and pass in the input type input, here we'll pass along the cart ID and everything else that is required for this mutation to be successful. Then on the response of that add item, add item will return a cart. So all that's left to do is spread on cart info and run the mutation.